Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of I Remember the Inland Empire. I'm Chuck Street. I'll be your host today for uh, the program. We're going to talk about a, a nightclub that was situated on East Street in San Bernardino that really didn't have a very long life. In fact, just a few months. But specifically, we're going to focus on the, the first night the nightclub was open. And by the way, the nightclub was called Mother Lizards. And the, their opening night, they had the pleasure of hosting Era Burden and a band called War from Compton, California. So we're going to focus on that performance and also a little bit about the, the uh, nightclub, Mother Lizards. And to help us do that is a, a guy who was there, Bobby Blue, who at the time was a disc jockey on 590 KFXM. So he served as the MC. So, Bobby, welcome to our program. Well, thank you. Good to be here. So, again, I, I remember, but first of all, I was there too, but I don't remember a lot about it. I just remember uh -huh. the venue was kind of dark inside. And it, it, I remember that location being a former uh, bowling alley. And I guess uh, the uh, entrepreneur, Bill Elliott, who, who uh, opened up the club, uh, filled in the ball return slots and turned it into a, a, a dance uh, a dance floor and but what do you remember about that night bob well it was uh, of, of course you know the big thing in san bernardino then was cruising east street and you could hear the radio stations playing in the kfxm and came in uh playing in the background up and down the street so there wasn't a whole lot to do other than cruise you know east street but here's this club new club right on east street mother lizards and um, it, it had it was it had great sound and you know it had the stacks and the amps and it, the lights and the dance floor as you said, and so it was really really a nice club. And Eric Burden and War opened it up it as the first night, and it was the first time Eric Burden played had War play in the United States, and he just wanted to uh, introduce him to an, a small audience. He didn't want to play a big audience because he wanted to work out the kinks. So, Bobby, I understand that Capitol Records definitely uh, heard about this performance by Eric Burden and the New War. And supposedly they chartered a bus and loaded it with record executives to come out and see the performance. Do you remember anything about that? Yeah, it was record executives and a whole bunch of fans. And it was like the Hollywood tour bus, that red Double Decker, I think it was. And uh, yeah, they came down to... Uh, uh, Eric was showcasing the band to the record executives. What was, uh, did they have a sellout that night? Was, was I just don't yes. remember. Yes, it was. And um, so this was their first performance in the United States and they had only rehearsed together for a short period of time. And um, so a couple of the members of war came down early that night and, or actually it was in the afternoon, about two in the afternoon, I was just getting off the air. And so we had a couple hours to kill. So I thought, okay, we'll go over to my house. So we went over to my place and um, just happened to drop some acid. And it was the first time these guys had dropped acid. And um, so by the time it was time for the show, you know, and Eric had come down later, you know, from LA. And uh, so, we were really blazing, you know, we were frying by the time, you know, it was time for the show. And um, a couple of guys I know, they had a hard time up there playing. I mean, the, the room was melting. You could see the vibrations coming off the instruments, the guitars and the drums and the sax and the harmonica and all the, all the instruments. And um, so, you know, this is, as the night progressed, it, it, you know, it got, more and more uh, progressed more and more in the room it's melting you know and uh, after the show eric was really upset you could tell that he was really mad about it but he was gracious enough to do an interview with me after the show which we had done a couple of interviews before that uh, over the years and he was always very gracious about it so well i i uh, i don't think we've ever had anybody on this program that would talk about their perspective uh, under the influence of LSD. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, uh, I, I want to be clear, I don't do drugs now. It's been 40 years, so don't do drugs, kids. And, uh, yeah. 
but that was kind of the era, you know, every, it was the summer of 69, which was a great Barry and Adam song, by the way. But uh, it was, um, you know, it was that generation. Um, but, yeah. But how was this performance that, that night at Mother Lizards? Uh, well, Eric is always outstanding and he's always been one of my favorite performers because he's a real showman. And uh, very, very few groups really put on the kind of show that Eric Burden puts on. Yeah. So Mother Lizards, I think, only lasted for a few months. Um, so do you think the name had anything to do with uh, its eventual demise? I mean, in a way, I, when, I guess why I always think of reptiles is a little bit creepy. <laughs> you know, so Mother yeah. Lizards. Was that name? Did that I, I don't, name you know, I don't think it was the name because... The kids were all looking for some place to go and something to do. And I, I just think that in San Bernardo or the Inland Empire, um, they were really spoiled with concerts from Swing and, uh, you know, out to college, UCR. And there were a lot of things going on there, a lot of music, a lot of big concerts, national acts and stuff. So I think it, it, it was a lot of competition for that club. True. And I'm, I'm sure that they, how many people you think could be jammed into the Mother Lizards venue, uh, you know, and, and still follow fire department regulations? Was you know, I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. So, I would have, it would, couldn't be more than 500. So again, uh, and tickets weren't that expensive. I, I remember seeing the Rolling Stones the second time they appeared in San Bernardino at the swings yeah. and the, it was $4. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, but again, uh, yeah, the thing was a lot uh, less expensive then. It was yeah. all relative because of inflation. Yeah, three fifty in advance and four dollars at the door. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing! You can't even get a cup of Starbucks coffee today, right? For that. Yeah. Price. Oh, no, yeah. Right. Right. For sure. Well, uh, it's it's too bad. It was it was a great concept, and thank God for entrepreneurs because they're willing to uh, take the risk. And to yeah. follow a vision and a dream, and uh, sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah, like I said, clubs are a really tough go, you know, to make that happen. So they gave it a good go. I, I understand that there uh, was another uh, performer who did show up there for a great night, and that was Lee Michaels. Lee Michaels apparently performed there later on, and I think San Bernardino was a favorite of Lee Michaels. He did. He performed there, and he also performed a few times at the Swing Auditorium. And yeah, he, he performed quite a lot at Swing because um, one of the account executives at KFXM actually was his manager. And um, so, therefore, you know, he, he was kind of a, a local act, and it started at Swing. But he went on. He was doing – he did um, Santa Clara Pop Festival. He did a lot of the big pop festivals after that. Lee Michaels and Frosty. And Frosty used to play the drums with his bare hands, the congas until his hands bled his that's what people wanted to see his, his hands would start bleeding all over the drum skins and uh, yeah anyway so that was uh, what everybody remembers about lee michaels and frosty well uh, anything else you wanted to add about our story no it's just that uh, it was um, again the summer of 69 which was really a great time and um just one of those little uh leaps on the on the map there that uh, did happen during that summer and uh, you know it was it was good times back then well bobby thanks so much for sharing your memories of that particular night in uh, inland empire history um again i was there but i just don't remember much of <laughs> <laughs> well you know what they say <laughs> if you say if you say you remember it you weren't there so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure for sure so all right. Well, thanks again. It's a pleasure talking with you uh, about that uh, very, very rich era in the Inland Empire history. Okay. So thanks, sure. <laughs> yeah, good talking with you. Great. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, until our next episode, uh, we look forward to seeing you. And just wanted to say that today's program was produced and edited by Mike Coonard. Thanks again for joining us.